Hello friends, myself Tushar Patel, Assistant Professor from the Department of Civil Engineering from the College Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Technical Education and Research Center, Navsari. For today, friends, the topic name is Harbor Maintenance. Before moving forward, once Martin Luther King said, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character that is the goal of a true education. So, for these are the contents of the topic. First, we'll study about the coastal zone and the beach profiles. Next, what are the causes of beach erosion? Next, we will move across to the coastal protective works, dredging and the classification of dredging works. And last, we will end the topic with the types of dredgers. Now, coastal zones and beach profile. The coastal zones have certain aesthetic and practical advantages and this has resulted in the concentration of recreational, residential and industrial areas in the zone. About two-thirds of the world population live in this area. The coastline is in a state of dynamic equilibrium. It gives and it takes. Due to the incessant movement of the seawater upon the shore material, there is a loss of land at one place and or deposition at another and the loss is usually more than the gain. Such random movements of the shoreline near the harbour is dangerous to the structures, both on and off the shore. At some places, there is excessive silting, while at the same other places, there is dangerous erosion of the shores. So, the important beach characteristics are the average sizes of the beach and the sand particles, range and sizes of the sand particles, the slope and the steepness of the foreshore and the general slope of the underwater. Finer or smaller sizes of sand are found on the beaches where very gentle sloping of foreshore is. The larger the particles wise which constitute the beach, the steeper will be the slope of the beach. So in this figure, the three figures are showing you one and the same beach profile but at a different angle. So carefully learn about the properties and the characteristics of these shores. Now at a the time, there are many causes of beach erosions. Some are the direct wave action, interception of the littoral drift, the sea level changes, the river mouth changes, anthropogenic activities, effects of the storms and the tides, and the effects of the shore relief. Now, what is direct wave action? The wind waves of the ocean have two types of effects on this beach. First, the steep wind waves erode the beach by taking sand particles into the deeper waters. And the second, the waves of the low steepness bring material into the beach from the shallow water portions of the near shore and deposit it just above the sill water on the beach. Next, we move across to the interception of littoral drift. Now, what is littoral drift? The longshore sediment movement that takes place in the narrow zone along the coast where the wave breaks. Now, see in this figure, you will be able to see the direction of the prevailing wind. Now, as when, when a particle of the sand reaches towards the seashore line due to the direction of the prevailing when the particles go in the motion of the shown arrow. Now once the water goes up to the shore, it backs up with the suction effect towards the sea again. So the particle moves in the downward direction. Again due to the wave, the particle moves towards the shore down the movement. This continuous zigzag line 
in the proximity of the coast is known as littoral drift now the littoral drift usually carries the sand to the karma beaches and deposit them in a zigzag pattern the determination of the direction and the intensity of the littoral drift is very important in developing shore protection works next is the sea level changes now the change in the sea level will also affect the erosion of the coastline a fall in the sea level will result in the redu reduced erosion as the depth of the water offshore will be reduced and thus reducing the efficiency of the waves to attack the coasts next we move across to the river mouth changes the river mouth are prevalent pre only in the areas where the rainfall is heavy and where the forest cover is virtually not existing anthropogenic actions certain man made activities are also responsible for the beach erosion as i can give an example dredging sand from the seashore results to the beach erosion next is the effects of storms and tides now these are very destructive and often they change the beach profile permanently storms generate large steep wind waves which take the sand from the beach and deposit it to the offshore tides causes erosion of the beach and the erosion is usually more enhanced at high tides lastly the effect of the offshore relief the offshore relief has a considerable effect on the coastal erosion the offshore relief affect the wave reflection a very wide continental shelf will render the waves less effective from erosion than where the water is deep immediately offshore the offshore sand banks or the mud banks provide the protection against the shore erosion now moving across to the coastal protection works the shoreline is likely to undergo continuous changes due to the effects caused by various natural phenomena hence the shore protection works are very necessary now the various shore protections are sea walls bulkheads groins offshore breakwaters revetments protective beaches and sand dunes so i'll be explaining one by one all these protective works firstly sea walls these are the structures constructed parallel to the shore line to develop a demarcating line between the land and the water these are used where the land is protected is there a developed one and the wave effects are severe as you are seeing in this figure this is a sea wall protecting the land over here by the action of the wave moving across to a bulkhead these are constructed along shorelines this is a shoreline these are constructed along a shoreline to prevent the encroachment of sea by direct wave action the walls may be made up of timber steel or concrete groins as you can see in this figures these are the structures which are built to protect the beach erosion by trapping littoral drift now there are four major types of groins permeable impermeable high and low long and short fixed or adjustable now the groins are used to stabilize the beach to reduce the littoral transport to widen a beach by trapping littoral material to prevent the loss of material by dividing a beach into compartments these are the different compartments a beach is been made by the usage of groins moving across to the revetments as you can see in this figure it is constructed either of stone or cement and concrete it protects the land from the wave erosions offshore breakwater these protect the areas from the wave action and serve in as an aid to navigation this figure shows you the offshore breakwaters next are the protective beaches 
Now, some of the protective beaches are suitable dimensions can prove to be effective to grant protection to adjacent upland from the effect of waves and tides. Means the land is very much above the height of the natural wave that is incoming. Next are and last are the sand dunes. These are the sand formations along the coast due to the wind and they prevent the movement of tides and the waves in the areas behind. Vegetation is used to stabilize due to sand. Now next is dredging. Firstly, what is dredging? Dredging is the technique and operations of removing material from the seabed or a lake to increase the depth of water. Now it makes the harbor region deep enough and clean enough from slurry or suspended deleterious materials to make navigation suitable inside the harbor. Now there are many types of dredging that will be explained in the next slide. Before that there are some objectives of dredging. Now what are these objectives? To create of artificial depths or new harbor. Maintaining the navigable depths in the existing harbor. Dredging provides the filler materials for protection and replenishment of beaches. Reclamation of low-lying areas. Improving the flow capabilities of a river. In the construction of sea walls and dikes. Replacing the unsuitable foundation materials with the desirable materials. So by dredging, these are the objectives that can be done while dredging. Now dredging can be classified into three. Capital, maintenance and sun dry. Now what is capital dredging? It is the initial removal of the bed material at the time of building a harbor. Maintenance dredging. After the harbor is commissioned, Due to various factors of silt materials will be getting deposited and eroded in a bed. So this type of dredging is very much necessary. And lastly is the sun dry dredging. If the dredging is to be carried out for the reclamation or sanitation purpose, this type is known as sun dry dredging. Now there are many types of dredgers. A machine which is specially useful for removing bed materials from under the water is known as a dredger. Now, the four types are bucket ladder dredger, dipper dredger, grab dredger and hydraulic dredger. So, see into this figure, the dredger consists of an endless chain of buckets mounted and running around a ladder formed in the middle of the bow of the floating vessel. The ladder can be lowered or raised by the line. The buckets are provided with prong cutting edges. The chain of the bucket is operated by a big wheel. See in this figure, a big wheel has been shown by which the ladder has been operated. This ledger is suitable for soft ground, sand gravel, hard clays. They are used where depth is not large. Moving across to a dipper dredger. It consists of a floating vessel strongly constructed carrying in an inclined frame. It has a revolving boom, dipper stick and hoisting cable. This is the hoisting cable, the boom and the stick. The dredger is very powerful and capable of excavating in hard soil, boulder beds and rocks. These dredgers are capable of digging up the depth of up to 15 to 20 meters under water. They have a maximum dumping range of about 35 meters. Grab dredger. Now this is the most common type of mechanical dredger. In this type, a grab similar to a cam shell is suspended by a cable or a chain from an extending boom or crane. The grab 
can be opened or closed by suitable mechanism. The jaws are then closed by pulling up the enclosed mass of the earth when lifted. The grab is then swung to the convenient position and the material discharged by the opening the grab. Now see in this figure you will be able to see the pontoon, the boom and the cable with the grab over here. The last type is the hydraulic type. In this type the soil is removed by the suction by means of a sand pump. If the material can be removed is loose, the suction produced by the sand pump is adequate. A system of water jets may also be used. Dredgers are steam or electric power driven. These type of dredgers are suitable for loose sand, silt, clay, mud in open water. They give higher output with low operation costs. Hopefully this is entertaining for you and hopefully you have been learned about the different kinds of harbor maintenance works. Thank you.